I'd like to welcome everyone to the August 20, 2020 monthly school board meeting. <coughs> Would you pray with us? Dear Grace and Father, we're thankful for all that you do for us each and every day. Thank you for all of our wonderful kids. And Lord, we pray that you'll guide and direct us tonight. We'd be good stewards over all that we're in charge over. And we pray that you'll give us the guidance and directions that we need to take. And we ask you to keep your hand upon all of our kids, all those that may be traveling, uh, all of our teachers and principals and administrators. Lord, we just ask you your blessing down upon them. And we ask you to help us tonight. And Lord, let us always be thankful for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Ohio County, County Schools, schools provide students with the skills, knowledge, and support to achieve excellence and become lifelong learners. All right, you have your agenda in front of you. If there's anything you want to add or pull off to discuss, now be the time. If not, I need a motion to approve the agenda. I'll make the motion. All right, we have a motion. Second. Got a second. All in favor? Motion carried. We have no recognition, no presentation. No, sir. I have recognition, but I was just going to do that under my report. All right. Do we have any requests to speak? There are none. All right. Board members have anything? <clears throat> All right. All right, I'll begin with the recognition that I have this evening. Uh, you all have seen that it's been a uh, busy summer as far as even administration goes with uh, Ms. Porter going to the high school and then Mr. McConnell be becoming the principal at Fordsville and Mr. Sawwester leaving the Area Tech Center to go be the principal at Wayland. And so that leads us tonight with our new principal at the Area Tech Center. I mentioned his name last month, but he was unable to be here. So tonight we have with us Mr. Alex Emery. He is the new principal at the Ohio County Area Tech Center. I asked him to come tonight just so you could lay eyes on him, but I think everyone up here knows Alex. He's been with us as a teacher for uh, several years. Um, helped coach basketball program uh, for some of those years. Uh, then has been most recently our athletic director there at Ohio County High School. And he's still going to be kind of an associate AD and still help with some of those capacities with some of those events. Uh, he did a really good job for us as athletic director. And I'm confident that he's going to do a really good job for us and our students at the Area Tech Center. So I invited him to come. And I hate to put you on the spot, but if you want to say anything right now, the floor is yours if you want it. Kind of awkward. I got people behind me and in front of me. Um, I just want to say thank you guys for everything that you've done. I know it's been a challenging summer, spring, um, and it has for me as well. You know, with that first, it was spearheading athletics and um, our plan to get kids back involved in activity, and then now it's kind of transitioned. I'm more trying to focus on how we're going to teach welding over a computer, um, and that's a challenge. Um, so, but. I wanted to pass along to you. I know you're getting questions. I've been getting a bunch of questions. I've been on the phone all day with parents who don't want their kids doing Google Classroom and Odyssey Wear. And, um, so they're trying to pull kids out of vocational classes, which we can't really afford to have that happen. So um, we do have curriculum that is very similar to Odyssey Wear from the state for all of our programs. So um, they're kind of different things. One is today's class, one's called Tooling U. And, uh, basically, it works the same way. Those kids can work on their own on curriculum for automotive, welding, machine tools. So if you get questions about that, please encourage those parents to call us and talk to, talk to us about it and let me talk them through it. Um, I know they're concerned. I was concerned when I was figuring out how we're going to teach machine tool and welding over a computer. And uh, there are ways. Um, it's obviously not exactly how we want to do it or how you guys would like to see it done, but there are ways we can accomplish that. And so. Um, if you have phone calls from parents, relay that message or send it to me and let me talk to them. But again, I want to thank you all for everything that you've done for me and everything you've done for our students and for our community. I know you're making tough decisions and you're in bad spots because I've been in those tough decisions and those bad spots too. So uh, just keep on plugging on and if I can help you, I'll be glad to do so. And uh, thanks for having me here tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. As you just heard Mr. Emery allude to, school does start, as you are well aware, on August 26. And as I say, you are in the know, it's going to start in the most unusual way. 
with remote learning and that is certainly going to be a challenge that is um, new to all of us. We, we've had a lot of PDs in the last several days. We have teachers, some are already well versed in Google Classroom and had it down and ready to go. But we have had uh, many teachers learning new things in the last few days, but they are learning and have done well in all the PDs and are looking forward to at least getting to teach again and hopefully being able to see some faces and some familiar faces even at that online. Um, again, unique situation, uh, but we are adapting and doing the very best we can with that. Uh, food service, you probably have saw that post. Uh, and we need to, I'll try to do a one call tomorrow, drawing everyone's attention to that post or the, or the website as well. Letting them know that we are gonna to try to deliver meals starting August 26, for as long as we're out of school until we return in person. Now, when we, when we return in person at some point in time, we won't be able to deliver all these meals. Mm -hmm. But as long as we're out of school, we're going to deliver meals, and we're gonna to try to do that via our bus routes. Since uh, that whole department's back in action, and they're working, I figure the best way to use them is have them run their route every day, and we will deliver meals. So we're having them sign up. That way we'll definitely know what stops to make, but they're going to run their route nonetheless. So any of our students that are out on their route, they will stop and, and they'll have the opportunity to pick up meals. And that'll happen each day. So they'll get that day's lunch and then they'll get breakfast for the next morning. So we will run that on a, on a daily basis until we're back in school. And then at that point in time, we will try to have to come up with something different. Do we, are we, we going to do any like bank for the weekend, like on a Friday? We can, we hadn't prepared to do a weekend, other than the backpack program, that yeah. will still exist for yeah. those kids that have always participated in that. We are also going to have hot meals. You know, when you're delivering on the bus, there's only so much, so many types of food you can prepare. It's gotta be prepackaged mm -hmm. due to safety. Um, and also that would keep for that hour or two on the bus. We're doing hot meals at the schools from 12.30 to 1.30 each day, so if anybody once one of the hot meals, they can make arrangements, come to the school uh, around that cafeteria door and uh, the ladies will be watching that and they will make those deliveries like a drive through They'll just bring it straight to your car. In order to pick any of those meals up, all you really have to tell us is the student's name and what school they attend. So for example, if I was picking the kids up for my children, I would give them their names and tell them Ohio County High School. That would get tallied, that way when we come back, the ladies could put that in the system and we can get credit for those meals. But that's how we're going to run it. May or may not be the perfect way, but that was a good way we felt like to utilize all of our staff that are working. Uh, no offense, but I don't really know what else we would do with all of our drivers and monitors if we didn't put them to work in that type of capacity. Board of Controls, you may have seen that today. That was a hot topic with athletics. Uh, basically what they did is I think they voted, uh, was it 14 to 2 or 16 to 2? On the option one? Option one. It was unanimous. It was unanimous? Yeah, okay. I saw something to 2 on, on one of the emails they that came that, through. What was option one? Okay. Option one? Option, option one is basically resuming as they had planned with practice starting on Monday. Yeah, option one is normal practice beginning on Monday. When I say normal practice, that means competitive. And then games would begin, uh, I think, in that first, is it first week of September? Yeah, it, they're kind of staggered. Football would start September 11th would be our first yeah. football game. Soccer may start just a little bit before that. Cross country would start right a little before that as well. So. And golf's already going. Golf, is, well, actually, yeah, golf will be finished before two months longer. So. But uh, that was voted on today by the Board of Controls. They did certainly put that uh, disclaimer in there at the end that pending the approval of the governor as well as the uh, Department of Public Health. Mm -hmm. So uh, at least if you're a sports fan, the vote went the way you wanted it today, but the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey may, may says from time to time, is maybe yet to be determined. There may be some more to that story there. Uh, we'll know more and I'll keep you informed if something was to change. Um, Staff's been back in and working hard. I know there's been a lot of districts testing the waters and doing different things. Uh, and they certainly have that right to do so. 
And, you know, that's something that we've mentioned and toyed with and that I've discussed with you all. You know, right now I still believe our, our best bet, our best thing for students and staff is to start the way that we have put out. We have told everyone this is our plan. I think we need to continue with our plan and not make another change because we've already had multiple changes up to this point. Uh, and it's not just because the governor said, and it's not even to me because the commissioner of education said, to me the biggest factor is the Department of Public Health. That's what they recommend. And the way I kind of view that is they're medical professionals, they're doctors, uh, they, they are the Department of Public Health. I'm a school superintendent. I'm not a medical doctor. I don't have a health degree. So if that's their recommendation, then to me that has more weight than the Department of Education and also the governor is what the Public Health Department says. So that's how we will start on August 26. Um, certainly won't say any names, but I will just tell you, our staff's been doing PD since Monday. The rest of our staff started today, was the first day for many. And in just a short time, you know, it's, it's not a lot, but we already have a few cases where someone is either tested positive or they're quarantined because of a spouse. So we've already seen how easily it does happen with about five employees just this week, uh, one of which is an administrator and will be out for a week or two. So it can happen really quick. So that's where we stand at the moment. And uh, everyone's looking forward to getting started on the 26th, even though it is a unique way. Our teachers wanna go back to work. They're ready to teach. They're ready to see their kids and they're ready to do what they've been trained to do because uh, they are professionals. And Mr. Chairman, that's all I have at this moment. All right. All right, you have your consent agenda in front of you. I need a motion to approve. I'll make a motion. We have a motion. I'll second. I have a second. All in favor? Here. All right, you have a, a little bit bigger personal report this week. Yeah, of course, that's there as always for just you to review. It doesn't take any board action to approve, but you do see that uh, we have a few resignations and some retirements. I'm sure with everything that we're dealing with in the world has had a factor in some of those decisions. Mm -hmm. Uh, due to their health status and situation, and certainly we respect that choice that was made. Do you have your uh, data security brief? That's in there again for you to review. You've seen this, I think, maybe each and every year. It's just a, a kind of an annual review that you look at that data security and breach notification best practice guide. Um, doesn't require any action. They just ask us to review it each and every year hasn't been any noticeable changes. It's basically very similar to the document that you've seen previously. All right, here's the point, Ms. Kat. Medicaid reimbursement, 
Checks and other debits total two million one hundred fifty thousand four forty four forty, less our outstanding checks, and one reconciling item for a refund in transit brings us to a reconciled balance again of seventeen million one twenty nine four forty three seventy. Any questions about that? Thank you all. Thank you. Motion to approve the report. I'll make a motion. Second. All right. All right. Approve the tax rate. All right. This is uh, the annual thing that you do each August where we look at the tax rate. And uh, you should have those forms that were sent to you. And as always, you look, they give you the compensating rate. Uh, there's other, and there's the 4% increase, and so forth and so on. It'd be my recommendation would be that we take the compensating rate with the two cents for exonerations. That's what you have done, I think. Uh, last 12. Mm -hmm. Yeah, last 12 years. Mm -hmm. So compensating rate, and that, that rate actually ends up is 54.4, and then when you do the two cents that we're allowed to do with exonerations, that would make it 54.6. All right, we have a superintendent's recommendation. I need a motion. I'll make a motion. Second. Any other questions? All in favor? Okay. All right, we have the 2021 SPDM allocations. I didn't bring mine with me, but I think I can remember. The, the bottom line, usually when we do this in August, school's already been in session, and we're able to see if our enrollment is up or down. But the bottom line in this case, we haven't been in school, so we have no changes in the staff necessarily. Uh, is this the exact same document that we approved? Yeah. This is really the whole top is the same document that you approved so for our May 1 allocation. Mm -hmm. So you approved this at our April board meeting. So the staff has not changed. We're going to make sure everybody has the same staff that we had planned for. Uh, we know we're not going to have a school necessarily that has more kids than we thought. At this point in time, if and when we're able to be in the buildings, we're probably going to have fewer kids, obviously, than what we were expecting. What is updated on here would be uh, the money part. As you scroll down, Miss Meredith did update that with the new figures. And so that's the only change that would be uh, on this report. So, be my recommendation to approve uh, the report as presented. All right, we have a superintendent's recommendation. I'll make a motion. All right, we have a second. All in favor? When the school starts back, if there is need to be a second set of requests, we have that Yes. If when if when in when we're able to be in the building, yes. if there is a problem somewhere where they need help, I will bring that to your attention immediately. Right. We won't let anybody be uh, stuck on an island and in a bad situation. I don't think we're going to have to worry about that for this year, but if we do, I'll make sure it's brought to your attention immediately. All right. We need uh, one of the construction documents approval for the auxiliary gym and training. Facility. Yes, and we have a couple of gentlemen from RVS here tonight we have of course you all know Kyle Abney uh, but you may have not met uh, one of the architects from RBS and that is Mr. Jeremiah Hawkins who is sitting right before us and Jeremiah is also a graduate of Ohio County High School and lives and resides here in Ohio County mm -hmm. and uh, so he and Kyle have been working on these projects together and that's why you have both of them here this evening. So I will let them talk about this item. Is there a 50 screen on that? Now make it where we can read it. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> 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 
So as we did last month with the Wayland project, uh, I'm here seeking approval on the construction documents for the auxiliary gymnasium slash ROGC training facility. Uh, as I mentioned last month with the Wayland project, this is the last phase uh, for board approval on the drawings before they can go out to bid to the contractors. Next phase after this is getting KD's approval on these documents and then they give us the go-ahead to advertise to the general contractors for bidding. Um, we will send that out for a 21-day 20 uh, bid notice and then take our, our bids. So this is another uh, stepping stone per KDE is the construction documents. And, and what these are are documents that are uh, ready to, to go to the contractors. Um, there's 47, I believe, sheets total. Uh, with civil engineering, structural engineering, architectural, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and they're all in this set. What I did not bring with me is a two and a half page spec book that really, no interest to anybody to go through that and, and read that, but it's just a spec book that, that specs out the products, the manufacturers, and the quality <coughs> of product that we're gonna have allow the contractors to bid. And that's part of the construction document phase. But we're, we're ready to go to the next step. Now, I will say, I cannot submit these until I get KDE's design development review, which they have not submitted to me yet. Uh, it's, it's weird with KDE. I've not got the design development <laughs> review back from this one, but I've already got the construction document approval for Wayland and the advertised the bid. And it was sent before the white so you know I, I wish I could figure them out up there but I, I can't I can't I can't figure it out to Amy Gray Gunmore. But anyway, so once I get that but I feel like it's going to be at any time to get that design development review approved and then we'll submit this and again, you know, hopefully I'm optimistic that they're taking the less time to approve construction documents as they do design development. And if that's the case, then I'm still hoping that we can get an October bid in time for an October board meeting to approve the bids for this project. And we're bidding uh, Wayland in September next next month, so we'll have the approval of both bids at next month's board meeting. My record. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm just going to say I recommend to that we approve the construction documents. Ms. Baldwin, did you ask Not at this time. Okay. All right, we have the superintendent's recommendation. I hear a motion. I'd like the motion. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any other comments at this time? <laughs> <laughs> all right, Paul Mayor. All opposed? This will be those schematic drawings, and again, I'll turn it over to RBS. I think you have a copy in front of, yeah, of you, but uh, I'll let them you walk you through, through any of that and field any questions. You get Here you go. You take mine. I will say before Jeremiah starts, just remember on schematic approval, KD only looks for two things. That's a site plan on how the addition for the new building will fit on the site, in this case an addition, and a floor plan, not a detailed floor plan, just basically basically a space plan showing the you know the spaces and the size of those and how they will function, you know, and if it's a new construction or a new building, you know, function of a building, in this case an addition, so how it flows with the existing building. So with that I'll turn it over to Jeremiah. I'll be pretty concise, but if you have any questions at any point, just let me know. Um, so, so the, the main goals of the project, this, this kind of goes hand in hand with part of what's going on with the Wayland Alexander project. We're relocating uh, the use of that old render building, um, which is going to put our alternative learning now at the ATC. And uh, the, the best leg forward to get that done is 
we will um, involve an addition to the front of that uh, ATC building. Some of the other items we're going to tackle in this project are um, renovating the current admin area. We're going to bring those spaces up to KDE regs, try to improve circulation a little bit. Um, we'll also be addressing a number of MEP items, so HVAC, electrical, plumbing, obviously for the new addition, but as we move forward, we'll be looking at how much we can improve on what we have in the existing building as well. Um, so that's going to uh, potentially be a new system, um, certainly look at our fixture counts, make sure we're we're progressing the building kind of equally towards our, our codes and regulation standards. Um, and then we'll also be looking at a, a new roofing for the, for the building as well, with a couple of smaller items as well. But we can move on to the next next sheet here. This, well, actually, uh, forgive me. We'll, we'll stay here for a second. Um, this is our site, which you're all very familiar with, on the left-hand side of the screen. We have the location of the auxiliary gym that you just approved the CDs for. Um, and then the shape in blue is a rough estimate of what we're adding onto the front of that building. So now we can move to the next, next sheet here. And it's, it's pretty straightforward. What you see in blue <coughs> is essentially the addition that's going to be required to relocate that alternative learning program. Our classrooms, our offices, our admin area, um, our therapist's offices and rooms. Um, and then what you see in orange is a renovation to the admin area, um, kind of reworking those offices, the storage spaces, again, getting ourselves up to the KDE regulations. Um, and then in the remainder of the building, as we can and as budget will allow, we'll look at kind of minor finishes and uh, ceilings potentially, as well as how we can incorporate our upgrade to the HVAC in the building. Um, I know in the computer uh, room there, was that a, is that a doorway coming off the hallway off the new addition? That is correct. So right now that space is not really used. So in, in the moving forward, um, we're, we're looking at the possibility of using that classroom as a hybrid, um, part-time used by ATC, part-time used by Alternative Learning Center, um, to kind of make the best use out of what we already have, takes away the number we have to add on to the front of the building. The Alternative Learning Program uses that computer lab for part of their daily st structure and schedule. So at one time we were looking at having another room, basically another classroom with the lab. But then after myself, Mr. Minton, and Mr. Emery all got together, we concurred that using that current space and making it the lab saves on creating another 750 square foot room. Well, that's just why I was just wondering. I didn't know if they would be able to. I was yes. just wondering about that because of the mingling with it being open. It would be locked. So the teacher would have to unlock it to allow them to go in. Because I knew we was going to have to keep the kids separated. And that's the reason I was wondering about that doorway going into that there off of that hallway. That's the reason I was wondering. It would remain locked and they would only go in there at their scheduled time. Okay. Otherwise they would remain in the four classroom addition. Yes. Unless they went across the hall to the therapy room. Mm -hmm. I want to add a couple of things. So uh, you'll see that there's a mechanical room here in the blue in part of the new addition. The reason why we put that there, because understand as schematics, we haven't yet got our engineers involved into the designs of the systems. Um, but if you notice, the existing mechanical room, uh, basically adjacent to the orange and blue, but there to the left, so that currently is on an exterior wall. All the utilities pretty much underground right now come from the high school in front of the ATC into that mechanical room. Okay, so we're going to have to do some rerouting because we're not going to build over them. Okay, so yeah. we're going to put new in and, and reroute those. So what I feel is going to happen is we can run our utilities to the mechanical room, and now we've got a straight shot directly across the ATC into the existing, so we can tie in anything that's existing there. Okay, so we we put that space as, as mechanical, 
That'll be like the main mechanical room we get the coming into the other. They may say, well, you know, if we change, I think that's a, a current boiler system, you know, they, we, we may not need it. You mm -hmm. know, so we, therefore they may say, we're fine, we've got plenty of room, we don't have to be on an exterior wall. And we can get our utilities to, and, and so we can take that square footage off for the mechanic room. But we wanted to show it as basically, I feel pretty confident that we're going to need that space. And also, when you talk about fixture panel, I'm talking about toilet fixtures, you know, lavatories, uh, water closets, urinals. You know, we take the occupancy of a building and look at the plumbing code, and that tells you how many of each you have to have. Well, this building hasn't been touched since, I guess, the 70s when it was, when the late 70s when it was built. Mm. And it is. So those fixtures have changed. That count. <laughs> yeah. So, so we don't have. And now we're adding more students to it. And they don't look at it as this is going to be one facility in, in the agency. We've now got one larger facility. You calculate those numbers together. And so we're adding bathrooms to the ATC, which is going to help. I mean, you don't, like we said, you don't want commingling of two. So it only makes sense to, to have the uh, bathroom here in, in the new addition. It's probably more than what's needed for that space, but it takes care of our fixture count for the for for the whole space. And you're functioning with the fixture count you have now, so only more more will help that. But you will see we've had to encroach in that area there to the left, which is right now just a vacant area. And if we rework these bathrooms to get them up to ADA to get the fixture sizes we need, you're, you're busting out concrete and putting a new piping, taking that space is is not a substantial type of difference to go ahead and get use that space and, and, and get the adequate size restrooms. And last, we talked about you know, trying to get as much touch as we can in the existing finishes. What I think we should do would be advantageous to the board and for this project is to try to take alternate bids for finishes like that because we can get a base bid to get what you see on blue and orange done. And then we can take alternate bids, which is basically line items for some of these upgrades, some of these finishes. Some of them wouldn't be advantageous to do. I mean, if you take that decision through the HVAC system, that should probably be a base bid. The roof should be a base bid. But some of these finishes, some of the floorings, paintings, ceiling grids, things like that, we can take line items because now we can see that price and then we can start seeing how much we want to add if it falls into our budget, hopefully we can get all of them. But again, you put them all in one, you get a, a higher bid, the whole project bust, and now we're back at square one. It does allow us to know we can get the blue and the orange, and then we can work our way up from there. Yep. So is this all going to have all these sprinkler system in it? Is that part of with that on this? That's the plan, yes. Uh, we, we're dealing with a water pressure issue, but, yeah. but there, is a, there is a sprinkler pit existing about where you see that toilet room setting. I think me and Jim and I figured out about six to eight feet below that, the sprinkler pit from those things, it's gonna to have to be removed. So I feel confident we can upsize that if we have to, to take up that water pressure to be able to get the suppression to the building. So yes, that's in the plan. Okay. Which again is why you wanna probably look at doing ceilings and, and grids, things like that, because all that, when you do HVAC duct work and do sprinklers, all this come out anyway. It's, you know, so we can either do, we can go on this to have punters put it back, or we can look at other avenues. I would recommend that you approve the schematics for the APC. Uh, Additions and renovation. For work, we have a superintendent's recommendation. I need a motion. All right, we have a motion. I need a second. I second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Through the crowd prevention through the environmental design. Yeah, this uh, septed, I think they're kind of calling it. This was something that was kind of new. 
Uh, I think even in RBS's experience, they haven't been asked to do this yet, but you may have heard us talk about uh, this new system that everyone has to use there, you know, that's involved with the Kentucky Department of Education called Asset Planner. And we have to put every school in that system. We've got to put what type of floors, what type of windows, all of these things. And if you remember last year when RBS did our facility plan, we also paid them to go ahead and put all of those types of things in there. Well, there's another portion of Asset Planner that's called uh, Space Planner, basically. And you have to label each room by number, say what the room is. It's a classroom or resource room or work room, whatever the case may be. But part of that is a series of surveys, and that's what this SEPTED is. So they approved the BG1 for this project with some contingencies that, hey, based upon you all will get this done and submit it to us, and it takes board approval. So that's what item six is. You have a survey, and Mr. Hoover worked diligently on that on yes, Wednesday. Right. And he went to Whalen, and not only did he have to give each room a, a number, he had to take a picture standing at the door of every classroom at Whalen Elementary and then answer a survey. Is it room, is it still being used for its original intent? You know, if it was built as a classroom, is it still a classroom? Or if it was built as a computer lab, is it still a lab, or did you convert it to a classroom? As well as answer some safety questions about are they locked, so forth and so on. So that's just the results of his survey. We have to have that on file for approval before KDE will allow us to move forward with the Wayland project. It's with Wayland. So when I got the review back on the construction documents for Wayland, he said you can advertise, but it's contingent that I get board minutes showing that you have reviewed the SEPTED checklist the board, with, with the board, uh, and I get those board minutes. So again, we've never really had to do that. But if that's what they're asking for us now to do, then that's what we'll do. You got to do it on the other projects too? We were talking, yes. We're, you want to do it for auxiliary gym, it's a new building. No, I'm talking about the. But the ATC, yes. yes. I'm sure when it comes time for that, Bill's got one of his comments, you know. Yeah, so, there you go. He's got his camera ready. <laughs> 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 he actually did. Because <laughs> he called and said, uh, is this really a work room or is it a storage room? They have a desk in the bottom. They were storage rooms. I said, uh, those need to be called storage rooms. When he gets to ATC, though, he probably want to crop out some of those classrooms that were referred to. Chester, I may go with you on that. It would be my recommendation that we approve uh, that document as presented this evening. All right. We have a motion. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. All in favor? Okay. Second. Okay. 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 Okay.